Is time a discrete unit? Eternalism and the Andromeda Paradox We are accustomed to thinking of the past as something constant and unchangeable, and of the future as something ambiguous and uncertain. Is that the reality, then? Relativity theory holds that the past, present, and future cannot be precisely divided and divided in an absolute manner. This has some implications for how we understand the past, present, and future. Einstein actually believed that the future was just as real and certain as the present and the past. We have no trouble imagining space as something that exists uniformly throughout the universe when we conceive of it. We refer to one item as being here at this location in space and another as being there in another location, although all are equally real. We have radically different perspectives on time compared to how others do. Everything that we perceive to be real is actually happening right now. The past and the future don't appear to exist in the same way that things do at various points in space. From our vantage point, only the present exists in terms of immediate experience and is actual. The past and the future are somehow beyond our control. Because it has already happened and we are powerless to change it, we give the past a presence that is more real than the future. Instead, it appears like there will be no future at all until it happens. But as soon as we adopt a new way of thinking, we understand that everything has changed. Our perception of the past, present, future, and time has been altered by relativity. Before the idea was developed, we believed that everyone's present was the same and that everyone would agree on how to divide time into the present, past, and future. No one would have questioned what the future held. This is no longer true, though, according to relativity theory. The concept of simultaneity is not infallible. However, according to another person, one incident may have occurred before another, and the chronological order of events may possibly have been switched. Varied observers have different perceptions of how time moves. We all travel from the past to the future at a different speed. This interpretation of time that results from relativity is well recognized and supported by evidence. One of the most experimental theories we know is relativity, and it has been repeatedly demonstrated that events rely on reference frames. There is no absolute difference between the past, present, and future, that much is certain. Each of us has a unique present that sets us apart from everyone else. My present may not be the same as another observer's present. As a result, the idea of now is comparable to that of here. In essence, instants of time must be conceived of collectively, just as every point in space exists in the same way. All events are positioned and present simultaneously in a four-dimensional volume or four-dimensional block, which is how space and time can be conceptualized. Every slice of this block that we perceive is a slice of the present, establishing a boundary between the past and the future. However, the way this block is divided into slices is not absolute or universal, rather, it relies on the observer. This understanding of space-time is significantly different from the one a doctor would have before Einstein and is also quite illogical. Before Einstein, we believed that everyone shared the present, that the past was unchangeable, and that everyone was progressing toward the future in the same manner. According to Einstein, the past, present, and future are all dependent on the observer and must all be situated on the same plane. This picture is another name for eternalism. Every moment of time and every point in space already exist. It is only our point of view that gives the appearance of past and future motion and the illusion of the present. Space-time, a single fourth dimensional structure created by relativity, combines space and time. In the same way that every point in space exists outside of our world and can be defined by coordinates, we should think of time in a similar way. All events that have occurred or will occur in the future already exist in the universe and can be represented by their own coordinates. There should be no distinctions between the past, present, and future since, just as all coordinates in space are valid, so are all coordinates, or events, in time. The universe and the life that resides there are not dynamic, organic entities. 
Instead, it's more like a video in which the current moment is only a frame. And if we had access to that movie, it would show all of the events that have ever occurred in the history of the universe. This universe, also referred to as the block universe, is one in which change is unreal and the present moment is unremarkable. Philosophically speaking, this calls into doubt the concept of free will. To help make things clearer, let's use an example. Roger Penrose came up with the term Andromeda Paradox to describe it. Among other things, Penrose is well known for having received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1964 for his important mathematical descriptions of black holes. He demonstrated that the emergence of black holes must be viewed as a natural process in the evolution of the cosmos in accordance with Einstein's general theory of relativity. He was also able to give a thorough explanation of black holes, explaining that at their deepest point, there occurs a singularity where all known natural laws vanish. Here is his actual quote, 5 minutes and 50 seconds, 3.20 on the other hand, a decision has not yet been taken as to whether the travel will actually take place. How is it possible that there is still some doubt about how that choice will turn out? There can't possibly be any confusion if the choice has already been taken for either party. It is inevitable that the space fleet will launch. In actuality, neither of the individuals may currently be aware of the space fleet's launch. They won't be able to tell until later, when telescopic inspections from Earth confirm that the fleet is in fact moving. They can then reflect on that fortuitous encounter and come to the conclusion that at that moment, one of them believed the decision resided in the uncertain future, while the other believed it rested in the known past. Was that future then uncertain in any way? Or was the course of both individuals already set? The theory of relativity essentially states that if someone is traveling close to me, they will slice space-time differently than I do, hence events won't be the same for them as they are for me. Additionally, if people were traveling away from, or towards, the Andromeda galaxy, then for the person walking in the other direction, happenings in this galaxy might be hours or even days ahead of those on Andromeda. Thus, it's possible that the decision to invade Earth has already been made. Currently, in the Andromeda galaxy, spacecraft have already left the planet and are traveling in our direction. So once more, even if in my opinion a decision needs to be made, it's possible that one has already been made. Naturally, from a practical standpoint, we couldn't experience this choice right away because we have to wait at least 2.5 million years because Andromeda is roughly 2.5 million years away from us before the information about the invasion comes on Earth. All of this has significant ramifications for how we view time. We might also consider adopting a different perspective since we were the extraterrestrials who desired to colonize Andromeda and could understand how the same justification could be used to justify its population. Two observers who are, from their conscious perspective, in the same location and having different sets of events in their present moment are said to be experiencing the paradox. The debate is solely about the events that various observers take to be happening right now. It has nothing to do with what may be seen. What we are saying now may occur in the future, the present, or the past for Andromeda's observer, depending on his or her speed and direction in relation to us. According to his frame of reference, you might not have ever existed or you might have passed away. This implies that information about you that you are unaware of could be revealed to a different observer. So in a way, some strangers may be more familiar with you than you are. Isn't it amazing and also kind of creepy? Galileo may be lost in space-time, directing his telescope at Jupiter for the first time, or perhaps Einstein is formulating a brand new theory. And we can't declare that those events don't exist since, while they may be in the past to us, they might be happening right now to another observer or, for others, in the future. Those occurrences merely coexist. Why then do we believe that time is moving forward from the past? How do we tell the difference between the past, present, and future? Be sure to like the video so that we can keep improving and making these videos better for you, the viewer, before learning the solution to this query.
Additionally, be sure to click the bell to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Entropy is the cause of it. The method we create memories and the fact that even this process of creating memories moves in the direction of increased entropy are both factors that contribute to the sensation of time passing quickly. Entropy, often known as an arrow of time, is one of the few quantities in the physical sciences that demands a specific direction for a period of time. The second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of an isolated system can rise but not decrease as time is moved ahead. So, measuring entropy allows us to tell the past from the future. Entropy can decrease over time in thermodynamic systems that are not isolated, such as living systems where local entropy is decreased at the price of an ambient increase, resulting in a net increase in entropy, normal crystal growth, refrigerator operation, and inside live beings. According to Stephen Hawking, what distinguishes the past from the future, giving a direction to time, is the growth of disorder or entropy. Here's where the video ends. Thank you everybody for watching. What do you believe of it? Tell us in the comment section below. See you on the channel again soon.